Mr. Stanley. Yeah. I am the worst guy to have in a panel because I can't hear a word you say. I can't see worth a damn. I don't know what I'm doing here. But Danny is an old friend, and I love these conventions. And I figure if I have to be somewhere bothering people, I might as well be here. <laughs> say I had to answer questions, I thought we were just going to sit here. <laughs> uh, All right. I'm going to try to break it up a little bit with some questions. Yes, sir. Yes, hello, Mr. Lee. I just wanted to say first off that it's a distinct and sincere pleasure to have you here in Sacramento today. <laughs> Is that where I am? It's a pleasure <laughs> Uh, two questions. One real quick one is, uh, it's great to see you, you know, the, the longtime face of Marvel Comics in all the movies and your cameos. And then we also like the Easter eggs at the end of, of the movies. I'm wondering, A, how that came up to, you know, be a reality and if it's going to continue. And then uh, the bigger question being, you know, I've been a Marvel supporter uh, all my life and I've uh, gotten into a couple you know, combat with DC fans. <laughs> and probably, I, wait a minute, I, did I hear an obscene word? There might be something. <laughs> Never to be uttered again, sorry. Uh, but, you know, I feel like I've watched the Marvel company grow. Uh, into question, something. your question, sir, please. Yes. It, yeah. it's, it's grown into such a huge empire. I'm wondering, from your perspective, from the early days to now, where Marvel's this huge empire, how does it feel to look at the impact you've had worldwide. I'll show you why I'm such a great guest at these panels. You heard the question? I like to give an answer that really grips you. Feels good. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It feels nice. <laughs> Just the one. Next, please. <laughs> the microphone's so I'd say that it's a huge, huge honor. Um, my question is, of all your villains, my favorite were the symbiotes, and I just wanted to know where you got the inspiration for those characters. She wants to know where the symbiotes came from, like Venom and Carnage and those kind of characters. I hate to tell you this. I did not create Venom or Carnage. I forget who did. Todd? They're two, they're two characters that I didn't create, and just by luck, they became well-known. <laughs> but it, I don't want to try to take the credit for something I didn't do, which I'm known for normally. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, please. Hi, I have a question in the Fake Me chat app from Daniel Watts. You created X-Men as an allegory about racism and prejudice, two human weaknesses that defined America in the 50s and 60s. If you had created a superhero team today, what kind of real-life problems would you try to address with your comments? Can you summarize that? <laughs> if you created the X-Men today, what kind of real-world problems would they confront? Um, oh, yeah. probably terrorism, pollution, yeah. Uh, the energy crisis. Um, I don't know, I guess. And, and I'd still stick to bigotry. I think that's still a big problem. Yeah. Yeah. With, with one exception, it's perfectly okay if you want to dislike DC Comics. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm only kidding, really. They're all friends of mine. <laughs> it's Hello, still... sir. I, um, I just wanted to ask you, what inspires you to create your stories and characters? What inspires you to create your stories and characters? 
greed. I needed the money. It was a job. I got paid for it. My publisher would say to me, hey, Stan, uh, the Fantastic Four is selling pretty well. How about coming up with another superhero? Well, if I did and it sold, I could keep my job. If I didn't, I might get fired. Now you know the true answer. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's crazy. Hey, um, uh, when I was growing up, well, before I, my question, I just wanted to tell you something. When I was growing up, I didn't have a lot of people to look up to in the neighborhood that I lived in. And uh, the people that I looked up to were your comic book characters. And it wasn't because of their powers or anything like that. It was because the qualities that they had as people. Um, the people around me didn't have those same qualities. And, and I wanted to grow up to be like them, not to be like the people around me. And I feel like if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be, I don't even know if I'd be alive right now. The, place, the places that I've lived, I don't know if I would even be able to, to be talking to you. So I just wanted to thank you for that. And, um, situation and your characters are role models and able to, to be successful today. Thank you very much. So send me money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I gotta tell you, it's incredibly frustrating. It's not that I don't hear. I heard you talk. But it's my my audiologist says it's clarity. I have trouble making out for me it sounded like and, and I did it, and, 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 go, go. I hear the sound and I can't make out the words and I want to tear my hair out, what, what little is left. <laughs> I have the same problem with seeing. I know there are people there, but I only see a mess. My luck, him I can see. <laughs> Question, yeah, uh, do you feel a disconnect with the characters because because uh, all these big movies are coming out, these huge movies, and and they take liberties with them to change things around and stuff like that? Do I heard him say they take liberties with yeah. the movies. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel about the yeah. movies? Yeah, doesn't bother me because the movies are so successful, and I have nothing to do with the movies, and I get a lot of the credit for them, so I'm not going to complain. <laughs> Marvel movie that you were in. My favorite. What's your favorite Marvel movie that you were in? Well, I, I tell you the truth, I liked them all. If I mention one, and the director of another one hears I didn't mention his, I'm finished. So I think they're all wonderful. <laughs> My favorite is usually the one I have a biggest cameo in. <laughs> First of all, Stan, I hope you feel better soon. Thank you. That I heard. <laughs> I was wondering how your movie cameos came to be. How did your movie cameos come to be? What, started, what was the first cameo? I think it started with Brian Singer, who did the X-Men, the first X-Men movie. He said to me one day, would I like to be in a scene? Well, despite the fact that I'm known for my shyness, <laughs> I said, yeah, I'll be in a scene. I don't know if you remember the scene. There was a guy walking out of the water and everybody is staring at him. And one guy is selling hot dogs at the beach. And he's going like that, looking at... The, and that was me in a piece of acting that should have won an award. <laughs> I guess Thank I, you so much, Stan. Excelsior! I, I know there's more to the answer. <laughs> I was going to say, I must have done so well at that cameo that all the other directors said, why should Brian Singer have all that luck and pleasure using Stan? So now they're all fighting for me. And if you believe that, I have a bridge in Brooklyn or something. So many hot dogs? No, I never saw I didn't even get to eat one of the hot dogs. <laughs> Okay, who's next? Uh, another question from the Frankly Chat app from Brian. Stan, who is your favorite artist of all time? My favorite artist what? Of all time. Ah, uh, you know, they're all so wonderful. The one I did the most work with, though, and the one who was the most successful, I guess, was Jack Kirby. Yeah! Woo! Jack, Jack was 
is an absolute genius. He could take any story and make it seem twice as exciting and twice as interesting by the way he drew it. In fact, I was the luckiest guy in the world because all our artists were great. Ditko, John Romita, John Buscema, Gil Kane, Gene Colan. I mean, they all made my stories look better than they were. And um, I better not, I hope none of them hears that or they'll want to raise. But, um, they, they were wonderful. I mentioned Jack because he did the most with me. And Jack was an incredible artist. He would just take the illustration board and start drawing. He never made preliminary sketches. He just started drawing and the drawing was finished. It was as though it was all in his brain and he was just tracing it on the paper, what he had already drawn in his brain. We could do a whole panel about that, but we'll save that for next time. <laughs> Thank you, who's next? How are you doing, Stan? So far, nobody's thrown any banana peels at me. <laughs> wait. Your big Does he say wait? <laughs> oh. I said, wait. Your big exploration behind this concept that I created with this superhero, and I just wanted to know, are you going to try to create new, contemporary, fresh heroes for today's generation, or are they going to still follow the old Marvel comic characters? He wants to know if you're creating any new characters these days. Oh, yeah. Zodiac. I'm not doing any new ones for Marvel, but I have a company called, I'm still with Marvel. And with Disney, because they bought Marvel, so now I'm with Marvel, I'm with Disney, oh boy. But I have my own little company called POW Entertainment. And of course, you've all figured out that POW stands for Purveyors of Wonder. And we're doing a movie right now called The Annihilator. It's, good. it's being done with a Chinese production company. It's going to be very big, not a Chinese movie for all over the world a new superhero. We have a new superhero in India called Chakra, the Invincible, that you'll be seeing soon. Nice. And we have a few new ones we're working on that I can't tell you the names of, but we're doing them with American production companies. But I'm not writing the screenplay. I just come up with the idea for the story, and then we give it away to screenwriters who don't do nearly as good a job as I would do, but I can't write it. <laughs> So I'm keeping busy. I love coming up with these things, and um, I love talking about them. And the next time we get together, we'll... Oh, I did one called The Mighty Seven, which is on the... Uh, what network is it? Um, isn't that Mighty Hub Network, H-U-B. It's mostly for kids. But The Mighty Seven is an animated movie, a full-length movie done in animation. As you figure, about seven superheroes. And it's doing very well, and they're thinking of making a real movie out of it. So remember the name, The Mighty Seven. I believe uh, you, you make a regular appearance in that, don't you? Oh, as a matter of fact, it, I bill it as the world's first reality superhero story, because it has real characters, namely me. I'm, I'm <laughs> one of the main characters. If you want to get a laugh, try and find it somewhere. <laughs> Up there. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you very much. My question is, if you could be any one of the superheroes you created, who would that be and why? Well, if I had to be one, and I'd really rather be me, because the others don't go to comic book conventions, they don't know what they're missing. But I guess I'd want to be Tony Stark. I mean, the guy is rich, he's handsome. The women can't keep their hands off. I mean, who wouldn't want it? So he's got a bad heart. Big deal. <laughs> who wouldn't want to be Tony Stark? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, please. Hi, I just had a question. Um, if you could have any of your comic book villains or characters in a movie now, um, which would you choose? If, I could have if you have any of the villains who haven't been in a movie yet in a movie, who would you choose? You know, I honestly don't... Oh, well, I guess the only villains that Doctor haven't Doom. been used that I can think oh, of are in Doctor Strange. Yes. Yeah. Oh. There was Baron Mordo, yeah. and then oh. there was the Infinity. Or I don't even remember them all. <laughs> oh, and Dormammu! Yeah. I 
you're just scared to say the name. Now you know how it's pronounced. I didn't even know there was a pronunciation. Dormammu. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Thanks for being you. here. I would have never remembered Dormammu. <laughs> Wasn't there an adjective that came in front of the, um, the something? The dread, the dread Dormammu. The dread Dormammu. <laughs> <laughs> I love adjectives. Yeah. Who's oh, next? Hey, Mr. Lee. Uh, I hate to speak of blasphemy, but is there any DC character that you wish you would have thought of? Any <laughs> DC character that you wish you would have thought of? Oh, I wish I would have thought of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess, I guess the best one, because it started the whole thing, is Superman. <laughs> the only thing wrong with Superman, they made the mistake Actually, Siegel and Schuster didn't make this mistake. They just said he can run faster than a speeding train, and he can leap over tall buildings. They didn't say he was totally invincible and nothing could hurt him or kill him. Yeah. But they got themselves into such a bind when you never worried about Superman. Bullets wouldn't hurt him, nothing could hurt him. So they had to invent kryptonite. And unless he's menaced by kryptonite, why are you bothering to read the stories? And I shouldn't be talking this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not fair. I mean, so they're not Marvel. Everybody can't be Marvel. <laughs> uh, Stan the Man Lee. My name is Brian, and I just first of all, I just want to say thank you for creating all these great characters for us to live. Uh, to read about, to look up. Uh, oh, you're welcome. Uh, my question is: is uh, what has been your favorite res uh, representation of uh, of your characters in the film? Like, what has been like one that you saw? You're like, wow, that's that is you know, what's, what's, been, what's, that is, what's been your favorite film representation of your characters? Oh, I loved them all. I loved Spider-Man, of course. Iron Man couldn't have been better. Yeah. I thought that Thor was great. Yeah. Captain America, nobody thought it would be as good as Thor. Yeah. I was a little disappointed in the Fantastic Four, because I thought they did um, the... What, what's the villain? Galactus. No, not Galactus. Oh, Galactus too. <laughs> they screwed. My favorite villain, I forgot his name. Doctor Doom! I thought they did Doctor Doom all wrong, and of course there was no way they could do Galactus, so... The thing was wonderful, though, in the yeah. film. And Chris, who played um, the burning of the human torch. <laughs> the burning guy. He was so good that they made him Captain America. Yeah. Oh, that happened. Oh. All of a sudden, the human torch is Captain America. <laughs> no, I loved, I loved, and I'm the only guy who thought, who starred in Daredevil, Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. I thought Ben Affleck was good. I thought <laughs> the story itself didn't work. They didn't emphasize. I always thought of Daredevil differently than the director of the movie yeah. did. Yeah. And it didn't quite, he, Daredevil wasn't the way he should have been. But they'll do another one, and they'll do it right, and you'll see it'll be a great movie. They're planning on how to do it. Oh, and you know they're doing Ant-Man. They're going to do the Black Panther. Woo! Guardians of the Galaxy you know about. And they're thinking of the Inhumans. What? Doctor Strange. So eventually, what? you won't have to buy a comic book. Just buy a DVD or a video, whatever you call it today. Wow. I have friends with DC's problem now, so... DC's problem now. It feels terrible to be sitting up here. What did he say? What was that? Who's that? Where do I look? What did he say? Sorry, I don't hear you. All right. It gives him a job. I actually hear you perfectly, but I don't want this man walking the street. <laughs> uh, I'm Dick. I'm an international professional journalist. We flew him from Belgium to be here. And one of the print magazines I write for is all about inspiring people. So, uh, what would you, what kind of advice would you give to people who aspire to um, get a job in a creative kind of business, who want to be creative and actually be able to make a living out of it? 
He's come all the way from Belgium to ask you this question, which is, what would you, you could say? have written me a letter. <laughs> <laughs> people who want to get into a creative field, but it's difficult to break in, what should they do? Well, that's one question I, I don't know the answer to. I have no idea. I got into it by luck. I heard there was a, I had a cousin who knew the owner of this publishing company and said there was a job open. I didn't even know what they did comics. They also did uh, sport magazines and men's magazines and movie magazines. And I wanted to be a writer, so I knocked on the door, I said, uh, yeah, there's a job open. And there was an assistant to Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, who were working as a team doing Captain America. Yeah. And my job was to fill the ink wells. They, in those days, they dipped the pen in ink, and run down and buy them the sandwiches for lunch, and erase the pages when they needed erasing. And little by little, I got into it, so it was a total accident. But I wouldn't know what to advise somebody. I, I would think, find out what it is you want to write the most and find out who publishes or buys those kind of stories and try to write a story that you think they would like and send it to them. I, the toughest question in the world is how do you get into a, a field like that? I honestly, I, I wouldn't know how to answer that if my own daughter asked me, which she did in the past, and I said, I don't know. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, uh, as you know, uh, it's a uh, abbreviated panel. I'm just session. getting started. Yeah, yeah. 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 all right. Yeah. 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 But it's getting time and a half, and it's overtime now, so. <laughs> Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Does somebody else want the room? No! 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 Okay, until they, they uh, yank us off. This is easier than working, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay, um, next question, please. Um, if all the superheroes you created, um, what would be the strongest out of all of them? Who's the strongest superhero you've created? Well, probably a toss-up between Galactus mm. and maybe the Hulk, who never got <laughs> You know, people used to say to me, if this hero and that hero had a fight, who would win? And I always used to give the same answer. It, it depends on who's writing the story. <laughs> you see, these are fictitious characters. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll that I didn't hear that. Who's next? Hello. Yes, sir. Pleasure to meet you. Um, my major question is, um, I've been reading a lot of Marvel and DC over the years, and I've been wondering, why is it that in all of the DC and Marvel crossovers, Marvel characters are always, like, eating dust? Like, what is that about? He's, he, his impression is that in all the Marvel DC crossovers, the uh, DC characters seem to win over the Marvel characters. Why is that? Probably because I wasn't in charge of it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I, there's only one crossover I know about. Years ago when I was there, we did a Superman Spider Man crossover. And I guarantee you that Superman didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> must have been a draw. The most. You're, you're right, he didn't win. <laughs> that's, that, that's good. We, we, have, we have time for two more quick questions. Where did that announcement come from? Yes. That's not the scariest thing God says to me. Yes, who's next? <laughs> How did you get the idea of creating Marvel? How did you get the idea of creating Marvel? Well, if you mean the name Marvel, we were called Atlas Comics. I don't think that's what you meant, though. And when the book, when I did the Fantastic Four and the book started selling well and everything, I figured we ought to change the name of the company, get something better than Atlas. I love advertising. And I thought, let's get a name you could use in ads. And I thought of Marvel. 
which had been the title of the first book my publisher ever published in a, a million years ago. 75 years ago, is that? That what it was, called Marvel Mystery Comics or something. It featured the Submarine and the Human Torch, which I did not create. So I said, let's call it Marvel, because then I could use expressions like, make mine Marvel, and welcome to the Marvel Age of Comics. I mean, I love phrases like that. Now, I'll tell you a funny thing about that. When we changed our name to Marvel, DC was called National Comics. So they must have felt, hey, if they're changing their name, let's change our name. <laughs> now, National is a perfectly solid, good, respectable name. They actually paid somebody to do research and find a good name for them, and that somebody came up with DC. <laughs> so we were... Welcome to the Marvel Age of Comics, and they were Reed DC. Uh, there were no competitions. Oh. <laughs> They're friends of mine. They're friends of mine. One more question. So, who's next? Hi, my name's Dakota, and I think Hi, and it's just an honor to be here with you. And I've been wondering. Where did you come up with the idea for Spider-Man? Oh. 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 And he wants to know, where did you come up with the idea for Spider-Man? Well, I told this story so often, for all I know, it might even be true. <laughs> yeah. I needed a new... The Fantastic Four sold well, the X-Men did well, and my publisher said, come up with another hero. I wanted to keep my job. <laughs> so I started thinking, and I saw a fly crawling on the wall. And I thought, boy, wouldn't it be cool if a superhero could stick to walls like an insect? No, I'm lying. I couldn't have said, wouldn't it be cool? I don't think the word cool... I think I probably said, wouldn't it be groovy? <laughs> Anyhow, to make a long story short, I went to my publisher and I said, I got an idea for a character. I'll call him Spider-Man, and he's a teenager, and he's got a lot of personal problems, and he's got the powers of a spider. My publisher said that is the worst idea. <laughs> so first of all, people hate spiders. You can't call a hero Spider-Man. Secondly, he can't be a teenager. Only sidekicks are teenagers. And thirdly, he can't have personal problems. He's supposed to be a superhero. And this went on and on. So I published the story myself in a book that we were going to kill. When you're killing a book, nobody cares what you put in the last issue. So I threw Spider-Man in. I did go draw it, and I put it on the cover. The book sold like crazy. So my publisher came in to me when the sales figures came. He said, hey, Stan, you remember that character Spider-Man of yours that we both liked so much? <laughs> <laughs> I swear. So let's do a series, and that's how it happened. <laughs>